Hi guys, welcome back to TOEFL with Yuva. In TOEFL speaking, taking good notes is really important because your score depends considerably on how you take notes. Today I'm going to show you how you can take notes that make your score really high in TOEFL speaking. I am going to show you what you should write down, how you should do it and why you should do it like that. If you want to get out the most of this video, guys, get a piece of paper and a pen because this will be a bit more interactive today. And if you want to get more tips about the TOEFL and if you want to download templates, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the next video. I hope you are ready, guys. Let's get started. Why should you have a specific note-taking strategy? Of course, in TOEFL speaking, you could just write something down and you could do this in some way. The problem is that this won't help you. The idea behind taking notes in TOEFL speaking is that these notes support you later when you are answering the questions. So you need to take notes in a way that helps you speaking later, that helps you answering the questions in a good way. And this means two things. The first is you need to write down the right content. And the second thing is you need to write down this content in the right way. This means that we need to ask ourselves two questions. The first question is what? What do you need to write down? And the second question is how? How do you need to take notes in order to get the most out of them? We are now going to have a look at each task in the TOEFL speaking section and I'm going to tell you what you should write down in each task and how you should do it so that you have notes that support you in the end, that help you get a high TOEFL speaking score. Let's start with the first task in TOEFL speaking. Speaking. Task number one is the personal choice task. Let's imagine that you get an agree-disagree question. This means that you get a statement and you have to say whether you agree or disagree with this statement and you also need to explain why you have this opinion. If you don't know what the TOEFL speaking task is about, have a look at my video where I talk about the speaking template that I used in TOEFL speaking because in this video I explain each task in detail. I put the link in the description below for you guys and I will also link it at the end of this video so if you like check it out. Let's first have a look at the what. What should you write down in task one in TOEFL speaking? To answer this question we first need to have a look at what you need to say. So as I said, for example, if you get an agree-disagree question, you need to say whether you agree or disagree with the statement and you need to provide two reasons to support your point. Now the question is, should you write all this down? No, you should not. You should not write all this down because the problem is that in task one, you only have 15 seconds to prepare your answer. And guys, 15 seconds is not much time. So it's definitely not possible to write down whole sentences or a lot of keywords and it's also not necessary. So what should you write down? Should you write down whether you disagree or agree with the statement? No, you don't need to do that. If you read the question, you know whether you will agree or disagree. You know that. You don't need to write down I agree or I disagree. That's not necessary. This will just cost you a lot of time and you don't have that time in task one 
in TOEFL speaking. You should only write down two words. And these two words stand for your two reasons that you want to provide in order to support your point. So this means you should write down one keyword for your first reason and one keyword for your second reason. Now you may say, but I won't have any problems to remember my two reasons. I can remember this perfectly for 15 seconds and I can remember this perfectly when speaking. That may be true. However, the problem is that when you start speaking, you will see a timer on the screen that tells you how much time is left. And this may make you very nervous. And in this moment, it may be that you totally forget about your two reasons because you were just so nervous. So in this moment, it's really good having these two keywords as a support. You should see these two words as a life belt that help you in such a situation. To give you an idea how much time you have to prepare your answer, in task one, in the TOEFL speaking section, we are now doing an exercise together. I will give you an agree-disagree question and your task is to write down two reasons that support your point. So get a piece of paper now and grab a pen and let's go. You have 15 seconds to write down your two reasons. And here comes your task. Children should have smartphones. Do you agree or disagree? That's it, the time is over guys, so put away your pen. I would love to know what your experience was. Did you find it hard or did you find it easy? Do you say 15 seconds is absolutely enough time to think about this question? What was your experience like? So please tell me about that in the comments below and I would also love to know which two words you wrote down on your piece of paper. So tell me about that as well in the comments below. I'd love to hear about that. So now I'm going to show you my two words that I would write down to answer this question. And these two words are communication and education. Let's have a look at how these two words I wrote down help me answering the question. I decided that I agree with the statement. I think children should have smartphones and I want to provide two reasons for that. And the first reason concerns communication. The idea behind this keyword communication is that I want to say, okay, look, in our world today, it's very important to communicate using your smartphone because a lot of communication takes place via social media. And I think that it's important for children to learn how to communicate using these apps. Let's have a look at the second word, education. My second reason is that there are a lot of educational apps and if children have smartphones, they can use these apps. They can use these apps to study better, to get better grades. That's why I think children should have smartphones. As you can see, I only need two words in order to construct what I want to say. You can just have a quick look down at your notes and you know, okay, that's what I wanted to talk about. Everything's there, I can calm down and everything's fine. Let's go on with the second task in TOEFL speaking, the campus announcement. In this task, you will first read an article and the article is normally a campus announcement that talks about a change and it provides two reasons for this change. 
After that, you will listen to a conversation normally between two students that talk about this change you read about in the announcement. One of the students will talk about his opinion. He will either say, I agree with the change or I disagree with the change. And then he will provide two reasons that support his point. Let's have a look at the what question. What should you write down in task two and TOEFL speaking? So first you read the article and of course the article talks about a change and the two reasons. So you should definitely take notes of that. When you're listening to the conversation between the students, you should also write down three things. First, write down whether the student agrees or disagrees with the statement. And it's totally sufficient if you use a symbol. I would really recommend you using a symbol because this is really convenient. For example, you can write down a plus if the student agrees or a minus if he disagrees. You will see the plus or the minus and you will immediately know whether he agrees or disagrees with the statement. After that, write down two keywords regarding the two reasons the student provides. Now let's have a look at the how. How should you take notes in task two in TOEFL speaking? I'd recommend using a table. So this means that on one side you write down everything that concerns the campus announcement and on the other side you write down everything that concerns the student. And the idea behind this is the following. Sometimes the student will directly challenge the reasons provided by the announcement. And if this happens, it's very, very useful to have a table because you will directly see what the student refers to. And to illustrate this, we are doing an example together now. Let's imagine that the campus announcement states that from now on, the cafeteria will not offer meat on Fridays anymore. The announcement provides two reasons for this. The first reason is that this is good for the environment because Producing meat requires a lot of resources and in the end this is bad for the environment. The second reason the announcement states is that this is good for people's health because they say eating meat too often is not good for people's health. So what you would now do is draw a table and on the left side you write down what the campus announcement states. So first you write down the change. In our case, this is no meat on Fridays. And then you write down the two reasons that the announcement provides. So the first reason concerned the environment and the second reason was about people's health. Now you listen to a conversation between two students who talk about this change. And one of the students talks about his opinion. And the student is not happy at all with the change. In fact, he is furious because he loves meat. And he also wants to eat meat on Fridays. And he gives two reasons for his opinion. The first reason he provides is that this is no solution to protect the environment because people will continue producing meat. If the cafeteria stops offering meat on Fridays, this won't change anything. And the second reason he gives is that eating meat is not unhealthy at all. He says that people have been eating meat for centuries and it's only natural that people eat meat. Let's go to the other side of the table. First, you should write down whether the student agrees or disagrees with the statement. So obviously, the student in our example does not agree with the statement, so you just put a minus there. 
And then you write down the two reasons that he provides. It's totally sufficient writing down one or a few words. In our example, his first reason was that this measure won't protect the environment. He says that this is no solution for environmental issues due to the production of meat. And his second reason was that eating meat is not unhealthy. So you write down these two points in the table. Now let's have a look at the table and let's see how this way of taking notes helps you in TOEFL speaking in task two. When you start speaking and when you have a look at your table, what happens is that you will see, okay, these were the two reasons from the announcement and the student provides two direct counter arguments to these reasons. You will exactly know what you need to talk about. And this is why this table makes task two in TOEFL speaking so much easier for you. If you get a task where the student does not directly challenge the reasons given in the announcement, that's no problem at all. You just draw a table, you write down the keywords, and when you're answering the question, you have a look at it. And okay, it's in table form, but it doesn't matter. But if you get a question where the student directly challenges the reasons given in the announcement, it will make your life a lot easier. Of course, when you're starting the speaking section, you never know whether the student will directly challenge the reasons given in the announcement or not. So that's why you should always use this table because it just gives you a nice overview of what's happening there. Let's go on to task number three, general to specific. In this task, you will first read an article. The article talks about a specific topic and then you will listen to a lecture that also talks about this topic. The thing is that both passages talk about the same topic, but they do it in a different way. And your task is to talk about the information each of the passages provides and then to combine the information. Guys, this task is really challenging for two reasons. First, normally the reading and the listening will talk about a complicated topic. So that's really a challenge. And the second reason is that you need to combine the information from both passages. And that's really hard. And that's why it's really important that you take good notes. Let's first have a look at the what. What should you write down in task three in TOEFL speaking? The reading mentions three things that you need to talk about later. So you should definitely take notes of them. The first thing is the topic. What is the reading about? The second thing is the definition. The reading will define the topic. Normally, this is a concept and normally the definition is a bit more difficult. So make sure that you write down the definition so that you understand it and so that you can use it later when talking about it. The third thing is the detail. Normally, the reading will provide one to two details. Regarding the listening, you should definitely write down the topic and you should write down one or two examples that the lecturer gives. Now let's have a look at the how. How should you take notes in task three in TOEFL speaking? This task is really challenging, guys, and you should take notes in a way that helps you overcome the difficulty of this task. And the difficulty of this task is combining the information from the two passages. In order to understand how you should take notes in this task, you first need to understand what you will need to talk about in this task. If you already watched the video about the speaking template that I used in TOEFL speaking, you will know that your answer to this question consists of three things. The first thing is, you must talk about the information the reading provides. 
The second thing is you must talk about the information the lecture gives you. And the third thing is you must provide a conclusion. And in this conclusion you must refer to both passages and combine the information and put that in your conclusion. Let's do an example together. Imagine that the reading talks about a concept and that concept is empathy. The reading talks about what empathy is, that means it defines empathy, and then it talks about why empathy is important for people. Let's imagine that the reading defines empathy as the capacity to understand and feel what another person is experiencing. So, this is the definition and you should now write down a few key words so that you can reconstruct this definition later when you need to talk about it. The reading then provides two details regarding empathy. The first detail is that empathy is important if we want to get along well with other people. And the second reason is that empathy is also important for long-lasting relationships. So you should write down these two ideas. And now comes the listening. The listening talks about the same topic, but the listening talks about empathy in a different way. Let's imagine that the listening talks about the importance of empathy in business. So this means the listening takes the topic and puts it in a different context. What you should now do is draw a line after what you've written down about what the reading said. So on the one side you have the information regarding the reading and on the other side you have the information regarding the listening. And since the listening talks about empathy in business, you can now just write down in business on the other side. After that, the lecturer provides two examples regarding empathy in business. The first example is that empathy is important where a business person has to work in a team because he has to get along well with the other colleagues. And the second reason he provides is that empathy is important for good work relationships. So what you are doing is you just write down a few keywords regarding these ideas. The context in which the lecturer puts the topic and the two examples he gives. So up to now you can do two things. You can talk about what the reading states and you can talk about what the lecturer says. But there is still a part missing and that's our conclusion. And this is the nut we have to crack now. So you need to provide a conclusion where you combine the information from the reading and the listening. And this is why we took our notes in this way. Now this way of taking notes comes in really handy because what you can do now is you just have a look at your notes and you can take your pen and you just circle the things that you need for your conclusion to combine the information. So let's have a look at our notes. The topic is empathy and they both talk about that. So in the conclusion we should mention the word empathy. We make a circle around empathy. And since we have to combine the information from both passages, we have to say in the conclusion that we can derive from those passages that empathy is important in business. So in business should definitely be in your conclusion. And now you should also say why empathy is important in business. Empathy is important in business because people need it to work in a team and people also need it to build relationships. So what you are doing is you combine the information that is given in the reading, which is to get along well and to work well in a team. And the other thing is to have long-lasting relationships and in the other context to have good 
work relationships and you take this information and put that in your conclusion. This is a really efficient way how you can take notes in task 3 in TOEFL speaking because once you start speaking everything is already there. On the one side there is the stuff you need to talk about the reading, on the other side there is the stuff you need to talk about the listening and then you just have a look at your circles and you construct your conclusion from that. Let's go on with the last task in TOEFL speaking. Task 4 the academic lecture. This task is fairly straightforward and that's why taking notes in this task is also really easy. The lecturer will talk about a specific topic and then he will define this topic and he will provide two examples regarding this topic. And this is exactly what you should write down. You should write down a few keywords regarding the topic a few keywords regarding the definition and a few keywords regarding his examples. And that's it. There is nothing special about this task, so you don't need to apply a special note-taking method regarding task 4. You can just write a bullet list like this and use this list when answering the question. That's it. This is how you take effective notes in TOEFL speaking. If you like, download the illustration. You can find the link in the description below. If you want to know more about the TOEFL speaking section and if you want to download the template that I used in TOEFL speaking, have a look at my video about that. And guys, if you found this video helpful and if you want to get more tips about the TOEFL and download templates, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the next video. I'd love to see you here next time. Bye-bye!